A very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. This is Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike. This time we're talking about state of basketball in the country with focus to what happened in Rwanda, Kigali during the just concluded Afro Basketball Championship that saw, you know, Kenya doing very well, though unfortunately getting eliminated at the pre-quarter final stage in the hands of South Sudan. Of course, we honor to have the Kenya Moran's power forward aerial local, also known as the doctor. Good to see you, man, long time. Asante sana. Kazi mingi, but we're here now. Ken also is also joining us. Of course, he's also passionate about basketball. Despite his height, he decided to play football, unlike the other sports. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, why not basketball? <laughs> I, I, it's not my thing. I, I tried it once in high school, but uh, it was just excessive. The sprints and everything. <laughs> I just had to leave it. So, uh, yeah. uh, Errol, tell mm -hmm. us what transpired in Rwanda. How was it like, man? Man, I mean, uh, first of all, you just have to enjoy the moment. 28 years is a long time. And as I said, uh, we did what we were supposed to do. We went there, we competed, and we represented Z55 million Kenyans on a big stage of African basketball. Everyone was tuned, you know, people mm -hmm. subscribed to Star Times up so yeah. that, you know, Kenyans were asking themselves at what time is the game even when they are in the bar catching up English Premier League football mm -hmm. because someone wants to have a phone watching mm -hmm. Kenya against Mali despite the fact that he's on TV catching up whichever game is it mm -hmm. in European soccer. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is the emanation of growth of basketball and the passion people are having for the sport? Um, the last two years the game has grown. Uh, you remember when we did uh, Uganda in the qualifiers, African qualifiers, and we beat Egypt, and uh, we beat host Uganda. That time we lost to Rwanda. I think that was a time when uh, the game uh, was starting to become what it is right now. And gradually, now we are having people subscribing to apps to watch basketball. It was not like that uh, then. So those are huge steps uh, in regard to basketball in Kenya. Generally, Ken, you followed the proceedings. Yeah, I followed the proceedings uh, ever since uh, they, they managed to qualify after 28 years. It was amazing for them. And uh, as you said, you know, it's, you just leave it in moments. You do your job there and you gain good experience. And uh, I'd also like to ask, um, after 28 years you qualified and um, do you think for the next one you are in a better place to go in for it without uh, any consecutive tournaments? Um, the good, the, the, uh, we have uh, really good talents coming up. I think from what we have done right now, um, we have inspired a lot of young players who will carry the game uh, forward. The game is in good hands, so I don't think we are going to be in the dark again for 28 years. So to me, with the World Cup qualifiers coming up in February, uh, we are going to play a lot of basketball. And we are going to inspire a lot of young people to play basketball. So for now, with the talent we have now, people who are below 25, we are not, I, I don't think we are going to be out there for 28 years again. Yeah, we are going to be frequent. Uh, players at the Afro basket. Yeah. So this is the start for the bright future of the game ahead. I do. It was just a stepping stone. Just a stepping stone. We already set the base. So now we pick it from there. The wheel is already moving right now. I was asking a friend of mine, how comes when you add the ball, the commentator had <laughs> <laughs> juicy details about your personal you know, career and, yeah. you know, sort of a profile, uh, most information at his fingertips. Do, do, do you, at some point, do you know each other? No, I don't even, I didn't even know the commentators. Some of them worked, I think, for ESPN. And my sister, they were, yeah, they were doing, I think they were doing commentary on my sister back then. So I think they just have a thing, you know with the name, the name I was using, Okal Koranga, so my sister is Felmas Koranga, so they know, they know something, a thing or two about me, but I never met them. They just said, this guy is a hard worker, and that's it. From day one to the last day, they were just singing Koranga, Okal, Koranga, and I haven't even rewatched the game, so 
I don't want if I, I might go and watch the games and I'll start <laughs> blushing. <laughs> the established to get to know what really happened. Yeah. How is the sister by the way? How is she faring on? Uh, she's doing amazing. She has finished her rehab. She was coming out of her knee surgery. Uh, and she's getting ready for her new season in uh, October. Yeah. And you've noticed nowadays this thing is blood and family. Yeah. When you start <laughs> playing football, the way you playing, even the smaller bro will play yeah, the yeah. same sport. Yeah. And, and usually when you see you have a sibling or a parent playing football or basketball or any sport, the love develops and you, you even become better than them. And <laughs> you look at Wanyama and, and his father, yeah. you see, you pick it up. It and, happens. Uh, yeah. yeah. And also, um, this tournament, uh, for your team, mm -hmm. I think uh, the coach was one key key mm, thing in your qualification and in taking you through the campaign. And uh, mm -hmm. What will you see is the best thing about her and uh, how much has she helped Kenyan basketball and the Moran's team? Uh, in terms of uh, analytics, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anal analysis and uh, statistics. She's a very she's very good in numbers, and she's a very good uh, statistician. So this lady can break down the game into little details, and that's how we've been training. It's not like the old school way of you run up and down the floor, do push ups, and no, she breaks down the plays. She shows you uh, the spots you're supposed to be scoring from, so everybody knows their job. So if I'm supposed to shoot from here, I cannot shoot from this spot because probably maybe I miss 50% from here. I'm shooting 74 from here, so this is the better place to score from. So this is what she's been bringing to the team, making players understand their strengths and where they can be successful. So I can say in terms of analysis and statistics, she's great. And that's what we needed. Because basically Kenya, we are naturally athletic. Yes. We can run the whole day. So you don't need to make me do those sprints every single time. Yeah. She received a huge praise, overwhelming one, yeah. uh, following you know her accomplishments mm -hmm. in Rwanda and even prior to that qualification journey. Mm -hmm. And I think she was feted. Yeah. She got the golden ball. That one they give to the tournament uh, legends and people who have made history. So uh, she got that alongside with uh, the Tunisian player who's the MVP. 42, yeah, 42 years old and the old guy from Cote d'Ivoire, Konate. Yeah. How does it feel considering it's a male-dominated field? How does it feel? What what what's her mood like whenever she's <laughs> with I you guys? I don't think she's intimidated. She's been coaching men teams for a while, uh, probably the whole of her career. So I don't think she's intimidated by the presence of uh, in a you know intimidated by a male dominated uh, sport and being able to coach men because as you can see she's confident every time and she's very passionate when she's watching the game she's involved she's engaged in the game so uh i think she's doing just fine can you also say teamwork has been uh, a key factor in terms of breakthrough for the team because when someone watches you guys mm -hmm. they blend and you know uh, sort of how you relating is quite professional you know the likes of bushwa mukota yourself mm -hmm. you know people coming together Tyler, you know, meeting the mother at the yeah. stadium after 11 years because the mother had not watched him. That was quite phenomenal. Uh, the beauty about the Kenya Morans is the camaraderie and the cohesiveness that we have. Those guys, you know, show a lot of love to each other. And this is a, why we actually win, because we are able to pick each other up when somebody is down. We are able to, we have that next man up mentality. If we lose today, tomorrow is a new team. If one guy is out, another guy goes in and do a fantastic job. And for T, um, that was emotional. That was emotional. I can't imagine uh, being there in his shoes at that particular moment, especially to a game that we were supposed to win and then we didn't. He wanted to win it for his family. Yeah. Ken, you must have noticed what really happened, you know, a mother catching up with the son because he, she had never gotten an opportunity to watch you play. And, you know, in the stands, 
it looks so beautiful. Yeah, that, and I think that's the beauty of sport. Yeah, that, yeah. that is the beauty of sport. You know, for something like that to happen as a parent especially, you, you just feel super elated, you know, to see your son and all the bright lights making it, uh, you know, being part of a team that has achieved something after 28 years, you know, you have to, you have to enjoy that moment. Everyone has to feel it as a beautiful moment. So the draws for the World Cup qualifiers, how do they look like? You are same, s- same old giants <laughs> with the one underdog. <laughs> we are meeting uh, Egypt uh, and uh, Senegal. And then I think we have one more, the Cape Verde. Yes. Yeah, so same old big giants and one underdog. We do what we do every single time. One must fall or maybe two, so we'll know when we get there. We are we're excited about it. It's a new challenge again. We forget what we have gone. You know, Senegal is the only team that we have not beaten. And Cape Verde, we haven't played them ever. So for them, when we meet Cape Verde, it's going to be a battle of uh, two new teams. But for Senegal, we have a bone to pick. Three of us were in studio, me, him, and Osoro, mm-hmm. and you had lost your first game yeah. of the championship. And I think the next game was against Mali. The next game was Nigeria. The, the yeah. third game was against Mali. Mali, and it was do or die, mm-hmm. because you had to beat them to ensure that you know to mm-hmm. cement your chances of moving yeah. to the next step. And uh, us guys were sort of pessimistic, because Mali also uh, appeared a very stubborn side. Yeah. But what, what was the... Uh, what did you do to ensure that you beat them? Uh, in fact, convincingly. We had a meeting that night. We had a meeting. Uh, the captain, Grave, called a meeting that night. And we said, guys, we are not ready to go home. You know, in the Afro basket, you lose the next day you're home. <laughs> so nobody had packed. So the guy <laughs> said, we are not ready to go home. If you have packed your bags, you can don't come, come to the game. But if you're still uh, optimistic, we are winning the game tomorrow, let's go there tomorrow and play like uh, the Kenya Morans. And people showed up. People showed up for that game. We were so excited even before the game. We just knew this. we cannot lose to these guys. Yeah. And they're coming on board of you know, newcomers, those guys who are getting a place in the team for the first time, yeah. jailing with you know, the... Every week, the, 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 do you think it's also working for the team? It's working. Albert uh, Odero has been one of the best players in uh, in the Kenya Moran since uh, they brought him in. And we have Derek, who didn't get a chance to play. We also have two of our guys who didn't come. They had commitments uh, with their teams, Bungay and yes. uh, Joel. Uh, we expect to have them in the next uh, qualifiers, the World Cup qualifiers. If we can have all these guys together in time and we prepare well for these games, I think we can surprise a lot of people. Yeah. Ken, I think I wish, sometimes I regret I ought to have been a sportsman myself. Because <laughs> when I was at the university, Griffin Ligare, the captain for the team right now, was coaching university men's basketball team. And that guy is not aging. <laughs> Evergreen. Evergreen, uh, ever green. He's not aging. Because I was asking myself, one of the guys I was in school with, how come this guy is, you know, is evergreen? Mm-hmm. And his hard work, his industriousness, determination for the team is unmatched. Mm-hmm. I think it's just the sport w- is a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. You know, the work you put in, you know. Yeah, it translates in the game. Yeah, take, yeah. You, 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 you take care of your body well, you know. You have that drive, you have that passion. Once you get attached to a certain type of game, I don't think anything kills it. And playing it, you know, learning more about it and hitting walls, you know, that gives you the drive to go forward. And uh, and also, once you make it from sports, uh, you go, you play under the limelights and everything, and you you get nicknames like him, <laughs> <laughs> the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you just some become people, a superstar. Some people, some people mistake him yeah. as someone really who doctor. might have pursued medicine as a <laughs> 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 Kume, the doctor is, you know, is the doctor for the game. Yeah, doctor yeah. Romiti Sham. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I is Griffo as a captain, his leadership. A great leader. Griffin Ligara is a great leader. Uh, he, everybody listens to him. Everybody follows his lead. I mean, 
We love him. We love him. He has been amazing. I hope he is not going to retire. I heard some rumors. We still need his leadership in the team to guide the younger guys. Uh, some people like me, we are still not there yet in terms of leadership because we focus more on other things. But for him right now is basketball and he is also a teacher so he knows how to communicate with people and how to handle situations in the team. So I hope he's going to still uh, be around uh, with the team for quite a while. Man, you've also been instrumental in marketing the game, publicity of the game mm -hmm. on various platforms, various forums. Even you yeah. have a website with which you highlight, yeah. you know, whatever is happening in Kenyan basketball leagues, national mm -hmm. team. Has it been like? Uh, it was hard at first, but now I'm getting used to it. I have published a magazine, I think. Uh, ah, yeah, it is being released. It's already, so I, was coming, I was coming with one, but so I met some culprits out here. They have <laughs> taken I'm all the copies. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he disappeared with the magazine, but good things are still coming. The, the issue one is out. You can catch, catch it from our, uh, our website. Yes. Or our Instagram, Twitter, just DM, we'll get it to you. And also... I mean, you mean these magazines are not sellable? You, we are selling them. Yes, they need to be we are sellable selling them. for re to attract revenue. Yeah, yeah we are selling them. The game. And we are hoping that in the near future, we are going to give basketball fans more information and everything they need about basketball. Basketball is also entertainment. It's not just a sport that people want to come and, you know, it's entertainment, it's business. Basketball, it's a lifestyle. That's why we normally say ball is life. You agree? Uh, yeah, I do agree. Ball is life. <laughs> ball is life. Of ball. Yeah. <laughs> and also, um, I think uh, when people are growing, when you go through high schools in Kenya and you, you have the high school games, mm -hmm. especially the period between uh, 2008 and 2018, mm -hmm. there were some really big names in high school, you know? Yeah. There were some really yeah. good, good players, but... Uh, not all of them managed to like make them runs or keep on playing basketball. They sort of disappear there in the middle, and they they, they were really good. And mm -hmm. why do you think uh, that happens? And how many have you seen that have kept playing the game since high school all the way up to the highest level? Uh, let me start with the ones who have uh, who stopped. I think it's because we haven't professionalized the game. And when you don't professionalize the game, people tend to find or to go and hustle somewhere else because the game is not paying them well enough to sustain a living. So you find guys are getting jobs outside, guys are you know, doing business, and they stop playing. They don't focus on the game because the game is not putting food on your table. So basically, you won't play it. But for those who have proceeded, most of them are those who got scholarships overseas and those who have managed to join clubs overseas. And basically hard workers like me who just, we don't know basketball, we just work hard. So, <laughs> <laughs> Like Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, we, we don't know the game. We just work hard and people like it and they give you a job out there and you just play for their teams because you bring the energy. Yeah. So. It's really hard here in Kenya to survive as a basketball player. Our league is not sponsored. So you can see how hard that is. There's no, if there is no money, people will not play the game as serious as it should be. So that's the biggest uh, problem that we have right now. Because yeah. I think if you walk around Nairobi, you'll find a lot of basketball courts. Yes. No, regardless if it's indoor or outdoor, you'll find a lot of courts and kids are playing the game. But after high school, you now life is starting. You're going to college after college. You have to get a job. If the game is not going to pay, you stop. So that has been our biggest cancer in the game. Yeah. William Musina, a promising footballer, also watching the show from Longata, mm -hmm. is asking how can he get that t-shirt you are wearing? Oh. Because it looks beautiful. And I think Available in our website, the doctorsreport.co.ke. Uh, yeah. uh, probably how much price? This one is 1,400 shillings. 1,400? Yeah. Wow. Even cheaper than 
the jerseys you guys buy <laughs> for <foreign> football <laughs> instead of promoting local game and you say the book also it can be found on the 700 website. can be found on the website on the website yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, talk to us about you know the future now what mm -hmm. all's for the game uh, in the future and you know what the local stakeholders kbf mm -hmm. are doing to ensure that you know the game continue getting to another level because it's progressing and we have to maintain the momentum uh, at the moment uh, the best thing that has happened to African basketball is NBA and uh, FIBA have come together to bring us the Basketball Africa League. This is a stage where players can go and showcase their talent and actually get picked to play in the NBA. Egypt did it with uh, Anas Mahmoud. He played for Zamalek and after the tournament he, was, uh, he went and drafted to Toronto Raptors. So now he's not, no longer with Zamalek, he's a Toronto player. That's a life-changing deal. So I think for Kenyan clubs, KPA did what they did. We didn't get to Baal because of our logistics. Yeah. But if we could have gone uh, to the BAL, I think some of the players, like six or seven, because we did have a good number of players, could have made it outside. So for now, I think ABF should... Do you think that was quite unfortunate? Yeah, it broke my heart. That's why. Uh, me too. Yeah, it broke my heart. Broke a lot of people's heart. A lot of players left the team because of that situation. So. Because that was prestigious and very lucrative opportunity for players to. If you if you if you look at these guys made I think around five to seven thousand for sixteen days yes. just to be in the bubble in Kigali. That's something that you can do something with it when you come home for sixteen days. There's a bunch of money. Yeah. Yeah. And there are other contracts that could have come. So, Baal is huge. Players should know now that they have a place. You can look at Baal, you can look at Europe, you can look at NBA. So, you don't have to just sit there and say, I want to go to the NBA, but it's hard. Now, you have Baal, and you have Europe, and you have uh, the NBA. You have stages that you can take. A shorter, it, it looks like, like it's long, but that's a shortcut market yourself to get there so the future is bright you have seen we have uh, uh, the uh, uh, nbn fiba are doing a camp in uh, yes they were at uh, national yeah, stadium right that partnership yes these things like that are coming to kenya right now these are the things that are making basketball great so the younger talents should believe that the future is gonna be bright keep working hard and focus I believe we're going to have better players in future than we have now. But I think we can all agree that, you know, basketball was a reputable sport in the country some time back. So whatever is being done right now is restoration of the lost glory because yeah. the sport was so huge, was so massive and it was so popular amongst Kenyans to an extent that, you know, nowadays, that's what I was asking. It's very unfortunate that basketball is no longer on TV yeah. because of the passion people have for the sport. Mm, and it's, it's so unfortunate that they're doing that to basketball right now. You know, TV coverage also helps in uh, identifying the talents. You know, you never mm -hmm. know who's watching. So if they can get coverage, no, no matter whichever level they play at, because when you look at where people want to play, the, the scholarships they get to go to yeah. the US. Yeah. When you play college basketball or, or high school basketball in the US, mm -hmm. everyone in the world can watch it. But yeah. Here, even in high school. Even in high school. Play, but here, the league is tough. Mm -hmm. Unless someone volunteers with their uh, kabambe and skins. <laughs> the game. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. tough. Sister plays uh, yeah. basketball yeah. in the US. Is it attributed to the scholarship? Yeah, she's on a full athletic scholarship since uh, like three years ago. She started at Tyler Junior College on another athletic scholarship, then she transferred to Troy University. Yes, Troy. Yeah. And she's been making team of the <laughs> season <laughs> All America. consistently. Yeah, my sister is a hard worker. She's a better version of me. She's a hard worker, a better version of who I am. I can say she was blessed with very good genes. So being there, she's just dominating year in, year out. Uh, this is her last... Uh, yeah, she's a senior now, and we are hoping that she can get uh, she can get drafted uh, in the WNBA. She has a chance. She's playing good basketball, 
and her academics are also good. So I don't think that anything is standing in her way other than herself. So she has a chance to make Kenya proud again. Wow. Yeah. And we're talking about Felmas Koranga. She's been making Kenyan proud, appearing on, you mm -hmm. know, magazines, making a team of the season at Troy University in the mm -hmm. league. Mm -hmm. And that is a good thing because she will be, you know, an opener to opportunities for others mm -hmm. to travel abroad and play. It's already happening. Yeah. It's, it's, already a, yeah happening. it's already happening. We already have three. Uh, girls who have already traveled. One went, I think, three days ago. So people, the coaches want to know if this is a Kenyan playing like this. Yes, there are we others. Want, there are others in Kenya. So they're asking, where can we get other players like you who can come and make an impact in our teams? So we have more players going. We have more players who are going to the States right now to wow. play basketball on academic scholarships. Mm -hmm. And that is commendable. Personally, yeah. yourself, you much traveled, man. Yeah. <laughs> several parts of this yeah, playing 16, basketball. 16 you know, countries, bro. 16 countries. Yeah. <laughs> and I, luckily, lately, lately, you get hampered by COVID. Yeah, every time I go somewhere, COVID. The last two years, I go somewhere, COVID happens. So I have to come back home again, stay for a while. Then I go somewhere else, COVID. Home. So now, I'm a, I'm a journeyman. How, how, how did it happen in Oman? What happened? First, I, I only played, I think, four games in Oman. Then I also played four in Algeria. Yes. So in Oman, I get there, I quarantine first for eight days. I'm quarantined. The qualifiers in Cameroon were in two days after my quarantine. Oh. So after the quarantine, immediately, you another flight. I, I checked out. Come back in after seven days, another quarantine. Seven more days. Namaliza, the season starts four games in. They tell me, the government said we cannot play, so you have to go home. When the season resumes, uh, you'll come back. So they're resuming uh, October 8th. I'll be there uh, on the 24th, but I'm going straight to Abu Dhabi for the tournament. Then after that, I go to Oman and finish the season. I followed the games. You missed the first game, but you made the team during yeah. the uh, I think third, I played the third... Th the three matches, you made yeah. the uh, team. Yeah. How, how is it like in Oman in comparison of basketball there and what is happening locally? Uh, this is going to be my fifth season there. Because I've, play, I've played been for... Before. Yeah, it's my second home. I've played <laughs> there for... Uh, three teams, Sidab, Ali Sidab, uh, Bashair, the one I'm playing for yes. now, and I played for Dofar. I think the facilities, this is where the distance is, because every club is a franchise. So every club, has, uh, they have their own sports facility, football, basketball, handball, volleyball. There's no sharing. And they're being supported by the government. For us in basketball, if we are traveling, the federation is paying everything. So we don't pay a cent. We don't pay food. We don't pay uh, the tickets, the air tickets. We don't pay anything. We just show up. We show up, we play, we go back home. And they pay for like 15 players, the coaches, the doctors. The federation is paying for everything. So you can see the government there is very supportive. And there is also that thing, the Ministry Cup. The Ministry Cup in Oman is where uh, you finish the league and then immediately after for a month, you play in a tournament like uh, games where they put a bunch of money. So if you keep on winning the Ministry Cup, your club keep on, keeps on getting more money, better players, and they keep on building new infrastructure for the game. So you don't need to depend also or on the government handouts to survive. So you can see, man. That is something that Kenya should emulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Having Instead of giving the money directly because you know someone might do things, put a tournament and yeah. put a bunch of money. Let people compete for it. Yeah. That's what we normally do in Oman. And you know there are huge bonuses for that. The bonus must be like half of your season uh, uh, on money, so you can do a thing or two with that. 
Mm-hmm. Do you think that is something that can also be uh, practically possible back home in Kenya? Yeah, it, it can be. In case it's tried and tested. Yeah, it, it can be it and can. it can work. But uh, those who will be putting the money, they, they need to understand the amounts required, you know, mm-hmm. to actually boost these teams because as uh, the country he plays in is already somewhere. But for Kenya, if a tournament was that, like that was to happen, the teams are at a really low level and are mostly financially really, really unstable. So the, the, the amounts of money being put in must be something to really build this club, you know, so that they also give them more heart to go for a huge amount to actually mm-hmm. win. That's the money put in should uh, match the drive and the passion of the teams. Yeah. Generally, uh, is it possible are we qualifying for World Cup? <laughs> World Cup, it's possible. <laughs> it is possible. Yeah, a win at a time. You know, it's possible. I've seen even football in Kenya. Uh, the Arambi stars are doing things. Yeah. Two draws, not bad, but... You know, the same way, the same way, uh, as Morans, mm-hmm. some few individuals had written us off that yeah, after we can't the two make losses. it from basketball yeah. because it had been like closer to 30 years without making it to the showpiece. And then we lost to Senegal, Angola, then we beat Mozambique. Then they say, oh, maybe they have a chance. Then we came back to, uh, we went to Cameroon, lost to Senegal, everybody gave up because they knew Angola was tough. Yes. Then we, champions? No, 11. 11 time champions. Yeah, Angola are 11 time champions. And players that we played with in that game had like nine championships, six, seven. And so when you beat them, people are like, wow. So I think anything is possible. You might, basketball is funny. Sometimes it depends with how you wake up. We can just wake up today and shoot the lights out. Everybody who shoots it, it goes in. And the opponent is missing. You are losing that. You cannot win that game. So that you might wake up on the wrong foot and surprise somebody, drop Egypt, drop Senegal, boom. We are in the Philippines for the World Cup. So after the tournament of Afro Basketball Championship, guys have uh, left for their respective clubs. Yeah. People have already gone. Tyler is back in uh, Denmark. Ronnie went to the States. He's flying to Spain, I think, in two days. He's, he got a new club. Uh, Albert flying back to the States. Buza is already in uh, Tanzania, headed to Kigali, back to his club. Everybody's gone right now. Yo, he's no longer playing at home. No, Buza is, uh, plays for Tigers in uh, Kigali round. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's been an amazing interview, of course, this particular afternoon with the doctor himself, Ferio Local, Kenya Moran's power forward. Of course, joining us to share his insights with regards to how Pro Basketball Championship transpired in Kigali. Ken, your last question before we leave uh, this uh, workaholic man <laughs> the set. Uh, last question will be, um, will you say qualifying for the Afro Basket was the greatest moment of your basketball career? Mm-hmm. No. I think winning a championship still is up there. Uh-huh. I won my first championship with KPA. Mm. And at that time, my mom was in the ICU. So that still remains up there as something that I worked hard for. Uh-huh. I worked so hard for it. I finished the game with so many bruises. We played with Lindsay. Mm. Those guys, you know, they And tough. at a tender age. I was very young. So <laughs> that's why. And then I was the MVP of the tournament. So. I always put that up there, and then Afro Basket, I think, comes there second, you know? Oh, yeah. Right. You're batting short? Well, I don't know what to say, really, but I'm a, I can say the game has grown. Kenyans now love basketball. This is something that people couldn't see coming. Mm-hmm. So it's here, it's now. Let's go and get that World Cup spot. Wow. Yeah. And you can follow him as he shares basketball information regarding Kenya and even Kenyan leagues to you trying to market and publicize the game at The Doctor on Twitter, of course, Ari Local, and even the website. That is the name. Yeah, the doctor's report.co.ke. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for coming through, man. Thank you for sharing that valuable information with us. It's been a pleasure having you. Sandy, son. Mm-hmm. Good afternoon. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Of course, for those who are passionate about European football, the fan favorite segment, the fan zone, is coming up where we look at the European leagues and what has been trending.
Thank you for staying tuned and don't go away.